So remember, there might be some trickery in your life today, not from the quilt show. We can never surpass what my son-in-law, Jerry, did, and it was the stitch eraser, and the Bernina stitch eraser. And man, did people get mad or what? Because they thought it was a real thing. So if you want to see that April Fool's joke, which I give a sterling A plus to, it is on YouTube and it's a Bernina stitch eraser or Jerry's stitch eraser. You'll be able to find it. it happened way back in the day, way before these lives and all that. And uh, speaking of Jerry, Last night, we had the kids over, meaning Jerry, Adair, and the two kids, and then Adair's um, dear friend Sam came. It was so good, to the point that Jerry called and asked if there were leftovers available tonight. <laughs> There's not. There's not. I will tell you, um, we have a bottle of vodka in our house that hasn't been touched in probably since we moved in. That's just not a preferred libation for us. I got on the internet and write this down. If you want, if you have vodka in the house, this may be the best um, noodle recipe on the face of the earth. It's vodka and tomato paste pasta. So easy and so yummy. So put that in your back pocket and it's so easy. I made the sauce in the morning. And it was just a matter of whipping up the noodles at dinner time. So I, 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 Happy April Fools. This is all you're getting from me. <laughs> so Barbara Black was at a show, and I'm guessing that this is Beverly Pen Penar. I got an overlay on it. Penar Penaranda. And that's her quilt. And she got herself a sweet little ribbon. Um, I love our BOMs, and this year is no exception. Um, people that make these BOMs they end up sweeping ribbons left and right. And remember, if you're a member, meaning you pay you pay 49 bucks a month, 50, John will come in. I don't know, no, not a month, a year, a year, you have access not only to all the shows, but also the BOM. And things like the Wednesday or the Tuesday treats where we get good discounts and stuff like that. So we really appreciate it. What did I, I know I said a year. 49 bucks a year. I'm going to ditto that. I didn't say what I just said. Um, we really appreciate you supporting us because we need your support. As I've said before, we're a three-legged stool and you guys are one of the solid legs. So thank you. And then let's see, what is this? Oh yeah. I, I, okay. I don't want to slaughter your, your word, your name, but it's Vareen, V-A-R-E-N-E. -E. She's gotten hooked on this chicken scratch. And what I really love is the fact that she used three fabrics as a base that were not really what was called for, other than the one on the far right, you know, a gingham, a check. I love that it's oversized. Um, Barbara Black, Susan says, Barbara Black makes BOM the best out there. Yes, Barbara Black does. And, and, I'll, and I will tell you at the end when she's going to be on next, we would be... Our, our feet would be in quicksand without Barbara. Um, she is so precise, so good. And, you know, she taught at Asilomar this year. And her class, I think, was full. And she's been asked back to teach again. I think, I think she discovered a miracle. She said people in her part of the world don't even know about Asilomar. Um, it's actually called Empty Spools Seminars. And it's been going on forever and ever and ever. And it is on the ocean in Pacific Grove, which is right next to Carmel and Monterey. It, it, you get to study with the same person for like um, five days. So that's cool. And then Margo, another one of our, you know, um, TQS stars, just put this up on Facebook. Yeah, Margo, that is really, really beautiful. Just beautiful. And she's done some YouTubes for us too. So, what's today about? Let's see. Okay, today is about the beloved bow tie, which is a block that I thought was the dopiest block on the face of the earth till it met me square in the eye. And then um, I'm going to show you some different bow tie blocks that, quilts that I saw out there. 
And then I'm going to share with you how to use the AccuQuilt cutting system and then design and quilt. Well, and then Jennifer Jiggis is going to take us on a little design and quilt video. It's a software that Quilter Select has that we can show you how easy it is to make decisions right here before you start cutting and slapping it on your wall. I think of, you know, bow tights probably been around, you know, like, well, for sure from the 1800s. And, um, all this new technology just really helps to make our sewing experience so much better. I mean, think about it. I was quilting when the rotary cutter came in. Yes, I was. All right. Here we go. Okay, good. So, Romney said Barbara's coming to um, your next November Zoom meeting. Yay! Okay. So, I went and started searching for bow tie quilts, okay? And Tim Natar, who has been on the show, this is hers. It's absolutely vibrant, and I love the play with color. You can tell that she has really taken a lot of time to get it right. I mean, not only do you have the swash of color across the top, you do on the underneath negative parts, too. Okay, then this is... Um, um, bow tie quilting and you know how I am about quilting designs and I went cuckoo when I saw this our beloved little plain bow tie can be dressed up in party clothes if she wants to be let's take a look at this one look at that yeah yeah it's um, bow tie quilting ideas it's designed by in-house designs if you want to go and look this person up and see. So here's a modern bow tie, and it is by Karen Griska. <clears throat> this actually with design and quilt would be a lovely pattern to work out because you could easily color the thing, the blocks up and then move them around and get a satisfactory design for you. Okay, this is from Quilting Daily. And what I appreciate about this is that this person has taken um, the block and then added in a very interesting sashing. For any of you who have been my students or whatever, I'm not a sashing person unless there's a reason for it. And this in here makes sense. The other, other thing is that when I'm going to do a border, I look to the elements that are inside the quilt and then I copy them and that's what she did with that zigzag border. It, this is a, I real, this is a kick in the pants, okay? And then American Jane, this is Sandy Klopp. She's one of the local Bay Area girls. Um, she sells a million patterns, and they're always fresh and nice. And she designs for Moda. I'm not sure she still does, but her stuff is very clean and crisp like this. So you might want to look up American Jane. I hope you guys have a pencil with you. Um, if you don't, no biggie. You can go watch it again, but I'm just trying to scooch you into different areas. Okay, then um, also in the area, of course, is Diana McClellan and Laura Nouns. And this is uh, Patterns from, from Me to You. And I think this is one of the first bow tie quilts I saw that I went, whoa, okay, we can take this to another level. The other thing is while my bow tie quilts are based on four inch blocks, this is much bigger. And to me, I mean, this was probably made 15 years ago, maybe 20, I honestly don't know. And look how it has stood the test of time. It is so modern. I mean, the only thing that doesn't make it modern or if you look at the prints, and that's probably how you could identify how old this quilt is. They have such a way, uh, such a way with their quilts. You know, Laura and Diana wrote quilts, 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 and more quilts, quilts galore. And if you look at those books, you'll see how innovative they were and are. In fact, I would hand it to those two women. It helped shepherd me out of the standard um, quilt making traditional format of blocks. Okay, then this is, okay, this is fun. Okay, this is fun with Barbara. And um, in Vermont, this was at the Vermont Quilt Festival. 
And I don't, it's old. Obviously, it's very, very old, I think. <laughs> Obviously, it is, I think. <laughs> um, I'm just thinking I got to get out my ties and start working again. But that is how I work, okay? I work by looking at something many times, not all the times, and I go, hmm, how can I change it? Well, look at this. Look at this. Um, this is um, Just Keep Swimming. Just Keep Swimming. That is super contemporary. I have no idea when it was made. It's got to have been made fairly soon. I mean, not that long ago just because of the fabrics in it. Yeah, because I see cave dots in there and things like that. Yeah. And there's another one with her. And, and I wonder, and I'm just, I'm making this up, but was it that initial antique quilt, I think, that is, you know, directed her to make more things with bow ties, okay? And then Mary Kay, you know, oh, also I want to say about this quilt too, I, I adore the nine patch border around it. And again, that was not just put up willy nilly. Um, that had to be thought about, which again, you could do on your design and quilt. And we will get to that, all right? And then Mary Kay, who works for us, she's a she's part of the, one of the genies behind, in the bottle. Um, this is one of hers, and it's about the solar eclipse. And it was a contest. Oh my gosh, she told me yesterday. I thought it might have been at the Lincoln Museum or Paducah. I, for, I forget which Mary Kay. I'm sorry you told me yesterday. Um and she then combined Drunkard's Path with this. And a solar eclipse is coming up. All right, then I want to show you my bow tie quilts before we get going. Oh, getting out of time. This was the very first one I made. And I made it for my scrapbook. And I, I for a border, if you look really carefully, I've got darker value bow ties for the outside rows. All right, and that kind of just very subtly frames it. Then I made this one, which I love. I love. And finding finding the fabric for the border, meaning the outside quarter square triangles was tough. I found the, if you look at the top, that particular fabric, and it was, um, I'm not gonna tell you what manufacturer, it was a long time ago, but the fabric was garbage. And had I known about fabric prep, well, it didn't exist at that point. I would have put it on the back. I couldn't believe the quality of this fabric, but that is the fabric I needed. Now, that's when I went to, I've got to call AccuQuilt and we have to get a dye, okay? We have to get a dye for this. And while this looks like it's fairly simple to put together, if you look at the quarter square triangles on the outside edge, they are all um, Y seams. And so I, I couldn't do that to anybody for the faint of heart, couldn't do it. And so they said, yeah, we'll do a bow tie dye, and, um, but you need another pattern. I'm like, oh my God, another pattern. They said, just make a table runner. Well, I started making more bow ties <laughs> and I came up with this. <laughs> so anyways, let's first start with the video um, from... Um, for AccuQuilt, it's like a three minute video. And if you've never played with this toy, you might wanna pay attention with it for, for nothing else. All right, I've got my screen and now I don't have, please let me find the right thing. Yep, there we go. And I gotta be able to hit the play button. You have no idea what's going on on my screen. Okay, here we go. Alex Anderson, and I am super excited about my four inch finished bow tie die with AccuQuilt cutting systems. It's a super easy block to make, I'll show you how, but also there's different ways you can utilize the die for different results. Let's take a look at the die. First of all, you can see it's two tone, and on it there are four squares that are two and a half inches cut and two squares that are one and a half inches cut. It is the sew and flip technique, which is so much fun. Let's say you want to have bow ties that all have the same background. Well, this is how I would use my die. I would draw a line between one, two, three, and four 
of the larger square. So right down the middle, okay? For the polka dots, which are the bow tie, I would pre-cut fabric, put it on here, and then overlap where the little mark is, just a little bit, as well as the background. Now, you'll notice here that the fabric is on an angle in relationship to the edge of the die. That's very, very important because you want to make sure that the fabric is on the straight of grain and not a little wonky on the edges. So what I'll do is I put it on here, make sure it's all systems go, and then put the cutting mat on top and simply roll it through. I'm working on the go baby and you can do up to four layers of 100% cotton. On the regular go, you can do six layers and then on the studio system, you can do up to 10. So you can see it's really fast and easy. So here are my pieces. I'm so excited. I just love this little block here. There we go. And then let me show you how to sew it together. What you need to do is to lay it out, all right? And then this is the bow tie. Here's the background. On the little squares, draw a line corner to corner and simply stitch. Then what you'll do is you'll press it over and you will see the bow tie is starting to come together. You can decide whether you want to trim this away underneath or not. I like to trim. Now, here's another way you can use this great little die. Let's say you want to have a positive negative effect with the bow ties. You know, two for the price of one. What you'll do is simply cut fabric that's a little bit bigger than the shape on the die, or shapes, I should say. Again, make sure you line it up so that the edge of the fabric is following the cutting line of the die and just roll it through. It's as easy as that. I have to tell you that I have made many bow tie quilts. I actually made the first one for my scrap quilting book and then I just couldn't get enough. So if you want something fast, simple, fun, and easy, I highly recommend the bow tie block with your AccuQuilt cutting system and You'll also receive with your die the pattern of my latest bow tie quilt, as well as it's on their site as a downloadable PDF. I love my bow tie. I know you will too. And remember, it's always fast, fun, and easy and accurate with the AccuQuilt cutting systems. What happened here? I gotta start cutting carbs. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> hey, that's what uh, 12 years ago looks like. The other thing is that if you are gonna do flip and sew, I really recommend you use a really fine thread. And that's when I use my 80 weight quilter select on the bobbin and then the 60 weight on top. And then you have a better chance of exactly lining up because it doesn't curl over. It doesn't go over the threads like a cotton thread. Okay, questions, and I was paying attention. Uh, why don't I like so sashings, Barbara said? Because unless it lends something to the quilt, unless it adds something, like sometimes there are sashings with little stars and all that, that's super cool. But if it's just to separate the blocks, I can do better than that. I can have the blocks interplay with each other. It's just a personal thing. I, I don't want to... It's personal, personal. And then Anne said, and I'm going to have to go back and look, that the diagonal isn't sashing um, the alternate block. She said that the line wasn't sashing. The alternate blocks had inserts. I'll have to go look again. Okay, so now let's get to design and quilt. Uh, to, and Jennifer, who I think she's here, um, was really a keystone in putting this program together is here to answer questions. And I'll try to answer questions at the end. I'm um, a novice at it, but man, I'm gonna tell you, it's pretty easy to scoot around and do all that stuff in it. So let's take a look at Jennifer's little presentation. Okay, and where is it? Uh-oh. Choose file. Well, that's about as embarrassing as it gets. Hey, John, I can't find the file. 
Oh, here, wait, maybe this is it. No, easy block, this is it. That's about as embarrassing as it gets. Look at how simple no. it is to create an easy block using the Design and Quilt software. Oot. This block is called Color Burst, and it was designed by Nicole Gilbert for the Design and okay, Stitch I'm Quilt Okay, I'm screwing along. up, everybody. We're going to create our easy block, and in our properties window, we're going to select. Okay, I screwed up. Sorry, Jennifer, if you're here. Wait, come here, John, please help me. Okay, so if I go to video. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Oh, for Pete's sakes. Let's take a look at how no, simple it is to I create want. an easy block using the Design and Quilt software. This block is called Color Burst, and it was designed by Nicole Gilbert out of this for the again? Design and Stitch. <laughs> this is why you don't have me do anything. Okay, so I go where? I go to here? Uh, uh, no, no. No, you go to, I'm sorry. You here? Screen oh, I love it that we have this many file. people, too. I love that we have this many people here. And then go to Downloads. Let me get rid of this right here. Easy bot creator. Oh, here we go. That's why I love you. You forgive me, <laughs> I think. There we go. Design and Quilt software gives you all the tools that you need to lay out and visualize your final quilt project before you ever sew a single stitch. Design and Quilt features a library of included quilt blocks, and it also includes the tools that you need to create both easy and advanced quilt block layouts. Also create quilt block layouts that are meant for foundation paper piecing and applique functions are included as well. Let's take a quick look at how easy it is to begin laying out and playing with your quilt blocks. I love very traditional blocks and quilts such as the rainbow bow tie quilt that you see here on the screen. This is a very simple quilt block that's been repeated and duplicated and then recolored quickly within the Design and Quilt software. Now this is something that I could certainly do on the design wall in my sewing room, but by laying out and playing with the colors ahead of time, it's gonna speed up my quilt making process for me and I'll know right away whether the effect is what I'm looking for in terms of the color variation that's working its way across my quilt. Let's take a quick look at how easy it is to start laying out a quilt audition our colors, our fabrics, and our arrangements of our quilt blocks. Using Design and Quilt as our virtual design wall, we can now experiment with a bow tie quilt block and see what types of secondary patterns can be created by simply rotating the block or experimenting with color placement. In our properties window, we can see that we have four blocks across and four blocks down, which is plenty for our experimentation. We can increase the number of blocks, we can adjust the block size, we can add sashing or adjust the borders. But again, for this exercise, we're gonna leave our quilt layout as is. Let's go to our quilt block library. And from the traditional folder, we're going to choose traditional 002, otherwise known as the bow tie block. Now let's just take a look at what happens when we repeat this one simple block over and over again within our quilt layout. Well, it's very graphic and very stunning, and this is something that would make a beautiful two-color quilt in a very traditional uh, colorway. Let's see what happens when we start to play with the layout of the blocks themselves. So if we were to choose one of the blocks and rotate that block, we can see that it's starting to create a little bit of a zigzag type of a pattern across our quilt. I really like the way that this looks, so let's continue this out by rotating or mirror imaging every other block in the layout. This gives us a completely different look and almost becomes kind of a circular impression across the quilt itself. Let's see what happens now when we start to experiment with the color and maybe add a little more texture and a little more visual interest to the block. Let's select the little triangle units within the quilt. Let's change those to another color just to kind of get a feel for what's gonna happen. Now what we've created is a little more texture, a little more visual interest within the quilt itself and we almost start to have the look of some stars or maybe a little trellis that's running through the quilt. 
This is a very interesting look and feel. Um, let's see what happens if we take it just a step further by adding some additional color and variation to the, to the blocks. We can select units within the block individually and start adjusting and arranging their color. Or we can select multiple pieces within the quilt and start playing with those colors as well. And sometimes I like to just sit and audition colors within the blocks just to kind of see what's going to happen and if any sort of secondary patterns tend to pop up. I like working with very scrappy backgrounds. So this orange area, I would almost be inclined to start playing with what happens if I start making changes and adding texture or adding color variations without adding a completely different color. And so as we're experimenting with this and we're working our way through the block, there may be things that you start to see popping up that you particularly like or color variations that you tend to gravitate towards. So let's have a look at a variation of that same layout where the color is what's creating another pattern throughout the quilt. So here again, those bow tie blocks are laid out with every other one facing the opposite direction. By using the main bow tie fabric coming down through the quilt, it's creating a nice vertical element. We still have that circular motion that's happening and then we have that secondary pattern that's running down through the body of the quilt. Using multiple colors of background fabric in the bow tie blocks just adds a little bit of visual interest and texture. Now we can, can continue this same experimentation by leaving the backgrounds intact and changing the color of each of the bow ties so that we have something that's very, very um, scrappy and visually interesting as well. Again, we can take that one step further. Now here by adding sashing, it breaks up that strong circular element that we had happening. It still is very interesting. It still gives us a lot of texture and appeal. Far cry from where we started way back here with our simple repeat of the bow tie block. While I like this variation, I think that my preference is without the sashing. So I'm certainly glad I have my virtual design wall to be testing this out rather than having to sew all of these units together. Now, as I'm looking at my scrappy layout, these four blocks almost seem to become their own unit. So what would happen if we start to treat the four blocks as a unit and now experiment with rotating the positioning of the bow tie blocks within that four unit area? Now we almost have a traditional X and O style repeat starting to happen. And this is really kind of interesting. I'm liking the way that this looks. And what if we continue that experimentation rearranging again the positioning of each of these bow tie blocks. Now we almost seem to have a chevron effect running down through the body of the quilt. Now by changing the orientation of our blocks so that we have that circle in the center and working our way out and around the quilt itself, we're creating something that has a completely different look and feel to that very first layout. Here, unifying the colors of the background of our bow tie block even makes this circular ripple effect even more visual. And we can continue experimenting with the layout of each of the blocks within our quilt layout. We have barely scratched the surface of what you're able to create and visualize using the Design and Quilt software. Up to this point, we've worked simply with solids in creating our quilt layouts. You can scan your favorite fabrics. You can import your fabrics from your favorite manufacturer's websites. You can even design your own fabric using the tools found in the Design and Quilt software. I hope that this has inspired you to take a deeper look at the Design and Quilt software. 
Thank you, Jennifer. <clears throat> that was, to me, that's mind blowing. Okay. And I had to laugh when she put the sashing in <laughs> and I'm like going, Oh, great. And then she liked it better without it. So, you know, there you go. I, again, I'm just scratching the surface on it, but I got to tell you a couple things that the, when you, when you buy it, it's a little bit more expensive than the competition, but that's it. You don't have to do add-ons if you want to import, um, fabrics, pictures of fabrics, etc. No, it's all added. There's also like at least 70 videos that Trevor has put together to help you. And um, <clears throat> you also get a, a startup little quick guide, like let's make this quilt together. And it takes you through everything. So we are all about, um, you know, saving you time and yet letting you expand in your creative process. Uh Let's see. Oh, okay. Um, this is, I thought was interesting and I don't have a digital cutter, but apparently you can also create your SVG files for your elect, uh, your electrical, your electronic cutter. I don't have one of those, so I don't know even what that means, but I want to make sure I say it. So <clears throat> I am very excited about this particular product. <clears throat> and if you think about it, um, if you think about it, Let's go back to that antique quilt. That I think it was antique, you know, at the Vermont Quilt Show. And how, how you know, how much everything has changed so much. It's, it's really cool and exciting. Okay, a friend of mine. All right. Um, more, okay, Lori there. Lori, if you're interested in more AccuQuilt related patterns, just go to their site and surf it. Um, I was involved with the company when it first started, and I went there to see if there was a video on that, well, 11 years ago, and what they're doing is mind-blowing. And someone else put in here, too, that she, when her arthritis started acting up, um, her husband got her the um, electrical go cutter, so that's awesome, too. So, if you have any, okay, so what's going on this week? As I mentioned Wednesday last week, I'm going to go see a new baby. I'm very excited. Tomorrow in uh, the Aptos area. Tomorrow, I'm going to the San Jose Quilt and Textile Museum to get a piece on Jonathan Shannon. Uh, probably a lot of you that are newer quilters don't know about him, but he was certainly an icon in the quilting industry, but was really only in the industry for about 10 years. So we're going to go pick that up. If you live in the Bay Area, I believe this exhibit is going to be taken down this next week. I, I can't, and I think they're only open, I'm probably going to get this Thursday, Friday, I don't know. Look up San Jose Quilt and Textile Museum. This is a must-go see. This would be equal to if the Statue of Liberty was out on Alcatraz. You've got to go see it because, you know, I don't know who owns these quilts. I don't know what's going to happen to these quilts, but they're some of the best quilt workmanship I've ever seen in my life. And they're at least 20 years old, if not more, maybe even 30. Okay, yes, John, yes, Ronnie, yes. He, it was like any, and he was political and it was wonderful. And he also, in my book, really stepped up what it took to win a ribbon. And then the Japanese quilters came in and they double stepped it up. So um, his work, was excellence. Okay. So then Wednesday, Barbara Black is going to be here because with the block of the month, with um, what month are we in? April huh. uh, on Wednesday. And because I'm going to be with the baby. And then Saturday, Dee will be here with her improv class. And that has just gotten started. So you want to jump on board. And it's kind of like one of my mystery quilts. I don't know. It's going to be, I'm not sure she knows what it's going to be, but it's going to be awesome. And we made some I would say little tickle kits that you might want to purchase just for fun new fabric. That's all this. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Thank you so much for um, choosing to spend your time with me. And I will see you next Monday. So have a great week, a great weekend. And don't you be fooled today. Don't be fooled. See you later.